Whoa, what's this? The ProSphere dashboard. Nice front end. I'm Brian Dane, a principal technology consultant with EMC. So, how's this going to help me in my virtualized VMware environment? Well, we'll come back to the dashboard because a VMware administrator left me a voicemail a few minutes ago complaining about performance with a certain application. He must have been eating his lunch because the message was so garbled that all I could hear was something about 135, I think. So I'm going to come up to the ProSphere search box, type in 135, click the search button, and see what happens. Hey, check it out. We have a list of all the objects that have 135 in the name. In this case, the list is not very long, so maybe this host is what he was talking about in his voicemail. Let's click on it and see what we get. Whoa, amazing! An end-to-end -end view of the storage environment from the perspective of that virtual machine. I see this VM on this data store running on this ESX server connected into the SAN and using storage on four EMC arrays. Awesome! And how easy was that? Two clicks of a mouse, and I went from a guy talking with his mouth full to an end-to-end -end view of his environment. With agentless technology, ProSphere has discovered the entire storage infrastructure, mapped all the end-to-end -end relationships, and given me a simple, intuitive interface to figure out his problem. Let's drill into the map to get a better idea of this application environment. Notice that all the other hosts, SAN stuff, and arrays are filtered out because ProSphere is showing me only what I need to see. Smart tool! Alright, I want to see more about the fabric, so I'm going to open the fabric, and I see multiple connections to the back-end storage, but it looks like only one I.O. path from the ESX server into the SAN. Hmm, let's look at the host a little deeper. That's a little small for my eyes, so I'm going to uh, expand that area of the map. Now, I see two HBAs, and it looks like only one of them is connected into the SAN. Hey, I have my first clue as to this performance problem, and it's only taken me a few seconds. Okay, let's look at the entire map again and select that ESX server to see more details about it. I see it's running ESX i4.1 as well as other details. Let's select the performance tab since we're doing performance analysis here. And let's give ourselves more room on the screen by removing the map view since we're done with it. Now we're seeing several key performance indicators for this ESX server. And by default, we're looking at the top five devices allocated to the host. I see in the KPI charts the um, IOPS for those five devices, their end-to-end -end response times, as well as the switch port link utilization for the port where the host is connected. We can see right away that the link utilization is kind of low, so we already have our second clue that the performance problem is probably not switch related. Nice! Let's scroll down and see the other KPIs like host device throughput, queue links for those host devices, as well as host CPU utilization so we can tie application activity to the I.O. levels. Since host device response time is a pretty good indicator of application I.O. performance, I'm going to drill into the details for that KPI by clicking on the chart details icon. We now see a chart of performance for those top five devices and more details about those five devices below. Hovering over a data point, we see that one of them seems to have spiked around 930, and that's the L7 device, so we confirm it by selecting it and seeing the fuzzy highlighting in the chart. Now, I want to get rid of the other devices because I want to drill into this one device. So I deselect those devices, the chart's updated, um, and there it is. I've already eliminated the switch as the cause, so now I'm wondering if the problem's on the host or the array. Check out how easy it is to show the array line in the same chart as the host device. We check that box and immediately we see that the array line which is the green dotted line down near the bottom, is averaging less than 5 milliseconds response time, while the corresponding host device had significantly higher response times. So, in just a couple more clicks, I have also eliminated the array as the problem. Fantastic! The only thing left is a host, and it's probably because all the IOs are being funneled down one path to the SAN. So, check it out. In less than a minute, I've gone from knowing nothing about this application to realizing that the ESX server is single path to the SAN, and that's probably the cause of the performance problem. Amazing! Now, let's say I wanted to know before somebody called me that there was a performance problem. I could set performance thresholds in ProSphere and be alerted when those are exceeded. 
you can see here I have several uh, alerts available, a couple for Clarion, a couple for Symmetrics, one for switch port link utilization. In fact, let's pick on that one. You can see the value is set pretty low, so I should already have some alerts in the ProSphere Operations console. And voila, there it is. Now in a real life environment, those values would be higher, but I would know before somebody calls me with food in his mouth that there is a performance problem. Let's go back to the dashboard. <laughs> Last week, the dude's manager over the VMware environment called me and said he needed to know how much storage they had, how it was being used, and did they need to be concerned about thin pool utilization. I gave him access to ProSphere and was done. That's it? All I did was give him login access? Yep. Because capacity information is presented in such an easy to use format that there wasn't anything else for me to do. One view into the entire environment. Epic! The answers to his questions are right on the dashboard. Total raw capacity across the enterprise, including its state of configuration, of the usable capacity, how much is used and how much is free, of the use capacity, how is it being used, along with the utilization trend. Now notice, as I hover over these charts, I can get details about that area of the chart. As we come down further, we have a view into every thin pool in the storage infrastructure, along with details about those pools. Finally, we see usable capacity by service level. The IT department is moving towards hosting a private cloud infrastructure, and they defined service levels and are offering those services to the business. ProSphere allows you to configure storage service levels and then analyze and report on the environment from the perspective of those service levels. Let's go back to the top of the dashboard and dig into these charts. Each of these charts can be expanded by clicking on the Maximize icon. Because the VMware manager wanted to know more about their storage utilization, he was able to drill into the usable capacity and see enterprise-wide utilization information. In fact, he used the bottom half of the window showing each array to drill into one of the arrays that was being used by the ESX server that had the performance problem. So as with the dashboard, he was able to see capacity information for this specific array. Since he was concerned about thin pool utilization, he expanded that view and was able to see information about each pool, such as consumers of the pool, what LUNs were making up the capacity of the pool, and subscription levels. So see why I only had to give him login access to ProSphere for his capacity reporting? Easy! So because of ProSphere's agentless discovery and integration into their VMware virtualization infrastructure, we were able to address both guys' requirements with an easy-to-use, intuitive solution in EMC ProSphere. You can download and try ProSphere, ask questions via the Everything VMware at EMC community, and contact EMC and your local EMC partners for more info. Thank you.